Greetings, my fellow servants of the God Emperor, heretics, and uh, xenophiles. Whatever you might be. We don't judge. This is the Ash Heritor. Welcome back to Rogue Trader. We have made our way to Footfall, finally, after, uh, you know, a bit of a, an interesting journey. May have blown up a planet along the way, and uh, gotten involved in some sketchy cult business. But, you know, business as usual, for the most part, in the Imperium. So, Cyrene has landed on Footfall and received the Footfall welcome, which is to say, got shot at by a bunch of armed thugs. Uh, so, again, business as usual in the Imperium. All is well in the world. Galaxy. Uh, all, all is not well in the Imperium, actually. It's going kind of rough. It's always been going rough, but it's, it's especially bad now. Um, so, here we are. We're going to uh, do some exploring of Footfall. There is quite a lot to see here, including some just dead people to loot, randomly laying around. I mean, it's football. Who knows? Let's, uh, let's go start with that. And some goods. Very nice. Some commerce we can do here. What's the commerce? Success is the only outcome At first glance, these look like standard containers, but their frames have been reinforced, and their ceiling improved to keep the smell in. These are used to transport contraband. Of course they are. And here, just a dead person. What do we have? Strange memo. One, the holy book by the altar. Two, that damn void customs guy. He is always on duty. Does he ever, does he get any time off? Does he ever leave for a piss? Is he a servitor or something? Three, guess what? Four, hanger by the window. Remember to bow to the emperor through the window. That is a strange memo, and I'm gonna hold on to that. Can't add it to cargo. Oh, and I wouldn't do it yet anyways, but uh, weird. All right, well, what about these goods? Contraband goods? We can snag these, right? Oh, wow, look at all this stuff. Corpse starts ration, hell of bone fingers, Agnes class rechargeables, that's fuel cargo, any any good stuff? Uniform kit cargo, I haven't even seen this. This must be a, uh, a space thing, maybe, I don't know. Good stuff, though. Um, oh, look, even more, and some more commerce opportunities. Anything good? Jewelry? Still more jewelry. Lots of jewelry, lots of uniform kit. These are new. Can't wait till we can trade and get some new stuff. That I citizen is, uh, being done. weird. The container is labeled Destination Janus. It is covered in dust. It must have spent a long time at the docks. You alright there? Pirate or honest trader? It's hard to tell the difference sometimes, especially on footfall. Alright, stop being so jittery. It's not good for you. Um, the walls of the container have rusted and its contents rotted away. A situation that is not uncommon for shipments trying to pass through Imperial Customs. Yeah, I can imagine. Goods. More, more notes? But imagine, what do we have here? A leaflet. Uh, some propaganda. Now is our time, not theirs. Go to their homes. Drag them out of their beds. Carve open their bodies like carcasses at the slaughterhouse. The Imperial Navy, Casbalica, Corda, Von Valencius, their names mean nothing now. Tomorrow, we'll erase them from memory. Go and seize power. As much of it as you can carry. A-N-V. The, uh... Those are the guys that attacked us. I'm gonna hold on to this. Maybe we can... No, can't do anything with it, but who knows, maybe, uh, maybe there will be something for us there in a minute. What have we here? Uh, looks like a, uh, oh, rank 5 functionary? You have a name. And a cold trader. Alangar Quistoris. Let's check this first. Form A716B is valid for up to 11 hours from the placement of the stamp. You have submitted it after 14 hours and 8 minutes. Your cargo registration request is denied. Oh, this sounds like some horrible... Huh? What? Don't distract me. Bureaucrats here sitting in, uh, you know, space cubicles. Sounds grim. Honestly, it looks better. Like, if I could work in a giant pipe, I mean, I don't, not that I work in a cubicle, but, you know, if I were to work in a cubicle, I'd prefer it to be in a giant cathedral-like structure in space with uh, the occasional shootout happening nearby, just to keep things interesting, you know? Always keep so. your eye on All right, what are we here? More, more goods? Another uh, pamphlet? Probably the Anvers. I can't remember what their name was. It's another one indeed. Well, I'm gonna hold on to it just so that it's no longer obstructing anything. That's how it's done. The container is marked foodstuffs, but it is empty, and by the looks of it, has not been moved in a while. Yeah. Seems like everything's oh, going quite well here. Have it? What is your aspects detected? Oh, hello. Why hidden goods? 
I like hidden goods. What have we here? A grenadier's cloak. The wearer and their allies are immune from damage from the wearer's grenades. That might be good. Uh, fuel, miscellaneous, jewelry, holy gifts, and more jewelry. We should be able to uh, amass a jewelry crate soon. I always keep my options open. What do you have? Rank five functionary, Morbetio Cavalli. What do you What do you say? Wait your turn. Oh God. We have to Q. Sorry, Kui Wee. The horror. This is the grim dark. Internal report. I'm writing to inform you that two days ago, the discharge was interrupted by a raid launched by the Anvers gang. In the attack, three loader servitors were put out of commission. Furthermore, one cargo container, serial number FDA116165, was stolen along with its contents. Any more? Nope, that's it. All right, 16165. Keep a look out for that one. Okay, so, oh, hello, more, more goods. I don't know how to get to that one, to be fair. Hold on, there's something, oh, hello. Let us not dawdle. This is, this is a, oh no, it's a, it's a code and we have to figure it out. What does the ragman say? Maybe the ragman will help us. No. Anybody that looks interesting here that might know a code? Maybe you know the code. It's just a random citizen. Rise to the top. Opticon 22. The Are you one of mine? No, right? The tall hunch text priest stares at you unblinkingly. The breath mask conceals his gaunt features. The skin on his hands is of a sickly gray hue, while his augments show sign of combat damage and are plated in black chromium, giving him a general air of lugubriousness. God, they're bringing out the words here. He looks... Why do you have art? Oh, wait, are you, uh... You're one of my crew members, aren't you? Or not? No, this is part of the Cognizance fleet. Interesting that he has art. Most characters don't get art, but he does for some reason. So I reckon he's important. Initiating identification procedure. This unit is defined as Logos Opticon 22 and is a fully authorized representative structural part of the Cognizance fleet and the priesthood of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Access has been granted to the following options. Information exchange, strengthening of diplomatic links, trade deals, donations. Initiating official greeting procedure for esteemed high-value visitors. Glory, success to House Von Valencius. A binaric aria begins to flow from the scratched box attached to the tech priest's chests. Chest, single. Requesting information exchange regarding contractual obligation logistica theta. Pascal and Opticon 22 exchange glances in a short series of binaric signals before bowing their heads in satisfaction. Opticon 22's head bows noticeably lower than Pascal's. I seek the friendship of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The priesthood of the Adeptus Mechanicus is interested in considers expeditious cooperation with rogue traders. Under the terms of the Treaty of Mars, it is willing to provide services to the Von Valencius dynasty. The priority of service tasks can be raised if diplomatic links are strengthened. The Cognizance fleet will be glad, alternative, unavailable, to accept any samples of sacred technology, samples of profane xenotech, miscellaneous items. Reminder, storage, study, and or disposal of the aforementioned objects, with the exception of miscellaneous items, is the preferential right of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Explorator fleet will accept information about planets in the Coronus Expanse that have not been re previously recorded in the Planetary Registry. Why do you want information about planets? Omnifaceted study of the Coronus Expanse is the sacred mission operational objective of the Cognizance fleet. Information about the planets and star systems of the Coronus Expanse must, will, be compiled, studied, and transferred to the holy repositories of Mars upon completion of the Great March of Exploration mission. This process increases the totality of knowledge and decreases the totality of ignorance in the universe. Makes sense. Why are you interested in Xenotech? Isn't that heresy? 
The Cognizance fleet finds it reasonable to believe, believes that forbidden knowledge in the hands of the laity causes destruction and violations that go against the Omnissiah's will. Weakness of mind and will unleashes Xeno heresy, which consumes the laity whole. An example that demonstrates the outlined pattern. A void station in the system of Langren's belt. According to the data available to the Cognizance fleet, the heretics on the station have trade relations with the Xenos for the sake of obtaining dangerous and pernicious technology. The destruction of these heretics is of high priority, but not high enough to demand immediate action. Alright. I have some questions. Information assistance will be provided. Opticon 22, that's a strange name. The designation Opticon is an identifier with an illustrious history, a significant, a significant number of archive references, and is used by many explorators in the Cognizance fleet. The extension 22 is a custom edition made by the current unit designed to highlight the unit's unique personality. Ah yes, 22. A great representation of uniqueness and personality. Remind me again, what is the Cognizance fleet? The Cognizance Fleet is an explorator fleet formed, produced by the Adeptus Mechanicus for the purpose of surveying, optionally conquering, the Coronus Expanse. The fleet's core squadron is located in Data Classified, while auxiliary echelons and autonomous void vessels are operating throughout the entirety of the Coronus Expanse. May the Omnisire's favor be with my tech comrades. Pascal reverently touches the explorator's insignia on his robe. You're an explorator. Then why are you here instead of exploring faraway systems? This unit functioned as a senior planetary scout for the duration of data classified procedural cycles. It was distinguished with three promotions by one grade, the right to a tier two sacred augmentation, a notation in the Fleetwife archive as a valuable unit. After a reconnaissance mission in the Tinnaris system, this unit was promoted to the rank of Logis and transferred to Footfall in order to perform the functions appropriate for its current status. There is something close to wistfulness in Opticon 22's otherwise emotionless voice. My archive contains data on the reconnaissance of Tinnaris system and the associated special circumstances. I express my respect for a veteran and adherent of the fleet. Ballad assessment. The Tenara system was a great test of faith. An assessment of this unit's durability threshold. An act of destructive xenocide. Ah yes, very good, xenocide. So, what happened in the Tenora system? Pascal and Opticon 22 turn to you and snap in unison. Data classified. <laughs> I love tech priests. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing on Footfall? This unit performs residential representation, maintenance of the bureaucratic machine for the purposes of ratification of the insulating boundaries, management of the Kappa Thread supply line, compilation of astrographic reconnaissance data. All right. Abelard lets out a long and heavy sigh. There was once a tech acolyte in Lady Theodora's retinue who knew the unique language of the esteemed tech priests. I only begin to realize the true value of his abilities after he'd been devoured by a Xeno beast on some nondescript world. <laughs> I, I understand what's happening here. I'm just gonna say... Right, how very straightforward. This unit is satisfied with the outcome of this communication. <laughs> Why are you here, and not, say, at the Legis Palace? Prolonged communication with lay people of high social standing causes this unit vexation, desire for forceful cessation of vital functions, <laughs> grief, decline in motivation, righteous fury, willingness to initiate purity protocol. <laughs> Remaining in an area of repair and maintenance of sacred machines is beneficial to the unit's cognitive functions. Desire for forceful cessation of vital functions. <laughs> oh, I gotta use that more. <laughs> oh, man. Can we keep him? He's my favorite. I, I know, Pascal, you're pretty cool, but Opticon 22 is pretty awesome. <laughs> this statement is true. 
The behavioral dynamics typically or typical of lay groups are frequently devoid of logical patterns and are taxing to analyze. I fully agree. Herd mentality, man. It is. It's something. Humans are weird. This is why I generally tend to stay in my room. Except for when I have to work. Or, you know, be social or any of that shit. Alright, I have no more questions. Before we receive an invitation to a meeting, because that might take me into a cutscene. I want to make a trade deal. Alright, what can we do? He can... We can buy all kinds of things already, so... Just buy everything. There doesn't seem to be any reason not to. Stims. Awesome. The user immediately gains plus 4 MP and AP for their next turn. Their MP and AP are reduced by 2. That's pretty good. Deflection gloves. Uh, I would have expected something... Oh no, sorry. I was looking at the noble silk gloves. I'm like, why does a deflection give plus 5 to persuasion? Uh, no. Uh, these gloves allow the wearer to parry melee attacks with their ranged weapon using ballistic skill instead of weapon skill. That's cool. That might be going to uh, Argenta. Give her a little bit of uh, extra survivability. More machine sets. And we have a target designator. Whenever the wearer hits an enemy with a dead eye shot, it reduces the enemy's deflection by one and applies plus one exploit until the end of combat. Stacks up to three times. That's fucking cool, too. Um, you have a mobile extraction. Oh, a mobile mining outpost assembled in accordance with the Blessed Standard Template construct. This small industrial complex can be deployed on practically any world, however inhospitable. The Surf Clan assigned to it will devote itself to the maintenance of its sacred mechanisms and the extraction of resources needed by the Rogue Trader. Awesome. So this will allow us to set up mining bases. We can get, it, we can get up to three of them. We need 35 profit factor, though, which we're currently not... <laughs> capable of getting. Damn! Some of this stuff is really cool. Okay, this is a better arc rifle. I'm assuming. The Mazoa pattern arc rifle, 13 to 20 damage. This one dealt 10 to 15. Yeah, that's a, that's a sizable power axe. Heavy plasma gun. Haywire grenades. What? What are you guys doing with those? Those are Eldar. Portative manipulator using reload. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, all of this is really cool, but we do not have the wealth factor. So I'm not going to trade anything with him right now. Because I don't think trading increases wealth factor. You have to actually do things to increase wealth factor. I received an invitation to a meeting. Confirmed. I wish to discharge, reciprocally validate the mutual contractual obligation designated logis... Logisticar Theta. Under the contractual obligation in question 34.761 Terran cycles ago, the Explorator Cognizance fleet received from representatives authorized units of the Von Balancius dynasty a volume of high-grade Promethium equal to the fuel capacity of six Tentalian void tankers. I'm assuming that's a lot. So... Von Valencia's dynasty gave high-grade Promethium to the Explorator fleet, so it seems like Theodora had a, uh, a deal with them. Received it, and then didn't pay. Compensate, remunerate, settle accounts. Should I go on, or is that enough synonyms? The stipulated payment reciprocal offering from the Cognizance fleet can be made to Von Valencia's assets at the current time after which the contractual obligation will be fulfilled. Archived. Confirm your status regarding the acceptance of the payment reciprocal offering. <laughs> Wait, okay, 30 years. Yeah, indeed. You're saying that my dynasty has had extensive business dealings with you. What payment can I expect? Where I can confirm and I'm willing to accept a payment? Ooh. This could give us a whole lot of collaboration. But profit factor seems like something we really need. I'm not going to ask him this. That's going to insult him, probably. You are saying that my dynasty had extensive business dealings with you. This statement is true. The Cognizance fleet concluded 19 or 1292 contractual obligations with the Von Balancius dynasty as represented, led, administered by the counterparty identified as Theodora von Valencius. 
The most substantial was Pact 8 Yule in accordance with which Archmagos Cubis Delphim Data Usher of the Sevenfold Hallowed Workshop of the Sacred World of Euphrates II was transferred to the planet Kiava Gamma to perform the duties of Minister as its Fabricator Sensor. The services of such a highly enlightened, enhanced, authorized servant were recompensed via the offering of paid for with a seven-year contract granting the fleet's exploration vessels maintenance privileges at the Kiava Gamma facilities. All right. Okay. So... Euphrates II was under Theodora's control. She requested the service of Archmagos Cubis Delphin, and in return, the Cognizance fleet gets to use um, the Kiava Gamma facilities as uh, maintenance facilities for itself. That's what I'm getting out of that. That is true. In the last couple of decades, Lady Theodora took pains to form a strong relationship with the Cognizance fleet. She turned down a dozen candidates looking for the right tech monitor to watch over Kiava Gamma. What payment can I expect? Universal Mobile Orbital Deployment Extractiums, Astra Arator Processing Complexes, in the quantity stipulated in the contractual obligation. Each unit has undergone a cycle of maintenance liturgies and has been assessed for conformance to the Sacred Standard Template Construct. Great creations of the Omnissiah, blessed be his beneficence, which has bestowed upon these complexes industrial might and a full cycle of reproduction and life support. I need the profit factor. I confirm I am willing to accept the payment. Okay, no, we got two mobile extractions, indeed. The request is accepted. The sacred machines will be loaded into the hold of your vessel. The contractual obligation Logisticar Theta is concluded. The Cognizance fleet thanks House von Valencius for its cooperations. Okay, so now, yeah, we have two of these right now. So this is going to help us get an immediate foothold on, yeah, basically mining planets. The Omnissiah knows all, comprehends all. All right, that was cool. Um... So, how many... Yeah, we now have... Yeah, it's just the two. We weren't able to buy the other ones. However, let's take a look at some of this gear. Um, the Grenadier's Cloak might be cool on... On her, actually. She currently has... Uh, that's pretty good, though. The Camouflage Cloak. I mean, not that it suits her thematically, but... And she doesn't use grenades all that often. The Deflector's Glove versus this. Oh, but this... Um, hmm. This would make her a bit more defensive. Or we do two extra damage on the range attacks with running gun. I think I'm going to take the defensive. That's going to be a huge boon. Um, what else did we have here? We had stims. Stims might be quite handy if we're in a position where we need to really do something. I'm actually going to give the stims here to, uh, Scal. And I might take some stims for myself. Just in case, you know. Deadeye shot. Who has deadeye options? You do not have deadeye. I do. But I'm not particularly good at it. I have the Rebel Sniper Rifle. Um, we could switch that up, but then again, he does benefit from having a Plasma Weapon. So far, nobody actually has much Deadeye options. What I could do, actually, is give the Sniper Rifle to, to Idira. I think I'm going to do that. Because she's an operative. She could benefit from that a bit more. Then she'll have Deadeye Shot. We drop this. She's not killing enemies all that often. So we're going to give her the target designator. I'm not so sure. You're not so sure? Oh, it's a... Not a headpiece. Alright. 
Question is, do you need this? Because you're barely killing enemies at all. Let's see if we can't give you something else. Does anybody have something that could be used better here? What's your lore warp? 51? Idira's is 55. I'm actually going to switch their heads around. Heads? Uh, helmets. <laughs> okay. There we go. Just, she'll kill enemies. Quite easily. Stabilizing bracers. Yeah, they don't go on anybody because we don't have any other soldiers. I hope we get another soldier character. Because, uh, you know, guns are cool. Alright. That was about you. exciting. Anything back here? Some Arvis lighters. Got another couple of them down there, or at least one. I don't know. It's probably gonna be a lot of talking today. Here's our ship. Is there money to be made? I'm sure. Let's head this way. We have uh, another. What is this? Cargo bay 111, hangar A1. Aristocrats, huh? And guards, just a bunch of aristocrats. Anybody we can talk to? No, but this looks quite nice. Look at the Emperor. Finest wines from Janus. We've heard the name of that planet before. Keep your eye on the prize. Can we climb? No. From the looks of it, no. Okay. Uh, so we just need to get out of here. What's going on here? Oh, well, this is even cooler. Life of St. Drusus, Volume 3. So this would be a shrine to St. Drusus. God damn, look at this. That looks really cool. Success. A small altar. The, the central spot has been given to Drusus, a saint from the neighboring Calixus sector, who is widely revered in the Coronus Expanse. Well, this would bring us to the rest of Footfall. Doesn't seem like there's anything else here. Let's quickly check our... Uh, it's Opticon 22, and there's that loot that we cannot get to right now. So, um, let's uh, let's go to the rest of football. We could make it to the atrium or the shadow quarters. Let's go to the atrium first. We're wanted there. The atrium, more guards. Let us not do it. More importantly, more goods right up there. Hold on, Lore Imperium. I get the job These columns done. appeared here back when the station was founded. When it was assumed that Footfall would become a wondrous palace in the stars. Yes, okay, that's that's interesting. So you have all of these, like, you know, ancient designs. These, you know, highly decorative things that were built when Footfall was supposed to become something else. And now it's just grown over. By the common riffraff. Right, twenty percent of holy gifts, seven percent of jewelry, and uh, a fireproof cape. We're immune to burning, and if they also, whenever the wearer ends their turn, burning is removed from all adjacent allies. Okay, it's okay. Generally, very specific defensive items. I don't find to be Rise very to good. The top, or get left in the dust. Um. All right, more more pen. Uh oh. I, I wish they actually spoke. Uh, be blessed, children of Terra, and maybe even okay. This place is turning me nearly deaf as well. That's without the sorceress voices in my head. Wait, who is this? That's Abelard. Yeah, I, I I don't really have time to actually like look at what they uh, say. So we can head down here. We can grab these goods. Another leaflet. God, you guys. Really annoying. And, and another one? We need no rules or leaders. We are not an organization. We are a force of nature. I'm sure. Are you guys, uh... No, they're instigators and refugees. Hieronymus Doloroso. I think we were supposed to talk to him, but let's quickly... up. Oh, never mind. The buzzing crowd has closed in on several harried-looking individuals. Some of their faces are smeared with fresh blood, and angry cries and cries and twisted faces leave no doubt. A massacre is about to take place. Just got their throats already! What were they thinking letting that ship dock at footfall? They're all stricken! No, no cutting! We get their blood on us, we'll be tainted too! Better burn them! Can we prevent this from happening? Oh, maybe somebody else will. 
Be quiet, you scoundrel! Hieronymus Dolorosa. Alright, you have art too, so I guess you're a representative for the, uh, the, um... St. Drusus people. A priest, clad in a simple black raiment, cuts through the crowd like a void ship crossing the sky. You dare pass judgment on others? What arrogance! To think you have the right! Argenta stares at the sight of the elderly priest. That's Reverend Hieronymus. I'm surprised he's decided to intervene in a street rabble. Street squabble, I should say. I will intervene. What's going on here? Several dozen gazers bore into you. And who are you supposed to be? We're incognito. A concerned citizen, an armed one, I suggest you think well before giving me lip. The rabble rouser gives you an appraising look. Got a point there. I wonder if you can back it up. Silence! You must be completely out of your minds, a band of woefully dim-witted reprobates who think themselves bringers of justice. Who are you to pass judgment on anyone? All you ought to be is... All you ought to be doing is suffering and repenting till the end of your days. And what's so wrong about that, Reverend? We just want to put these heretics to death. We're not heretics! A haggard man on the verge of tears. When the haggard man is on the verge of tears. We're refugees! I swear it on the Golden Throne! We served the Imperium faithfully until the day they hung us to, out to dry. Where were the protectors that were meant to shield the lands of humanity from nightmares? Traitors! Traitors and heretics! The lot of them! A murmur runs through the crowd. People gawk at you, at the priest, at the wretched group huddling in the center. How tiring. The motley sea of colors that fills this restless crowd is hard on the eyes. So many hues, but most of them are acid yellow streaks of fear. The red buds swelling, ready to burst and paint all who are gathering here. Cassia looks at the crowd of troublemakers wearily, and they shudder at the very sight of her. As for the hearts of those who have been forced to defend themselves, they are shrouded in purplish black grief, but their words are as transparent as the ice that lies at the top of a glacier. But commoners are always deaf to others' suffering, for such is their nature. Interfering in their affairs is hardly worthy of you or me, Cy Cyrene. <laughs> All onlookers are to return to their homes immediately. The refugees can go to Dark Alpha Row. I will speak to you later. Comply or face the consequences. The rabble rouser looks at you morosely. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble over this law. The refugees use the interruption to make off in the direction of Doc Alpha Row. You can always use more, you know, serfs on board the ship. I guess we're gonna talk to. Hi, that's a hand. Hieronymus <laughs> Doloroso. The arrogance and self righteousness of a malefactor. The priest shakes his head disapprovingly, then his eyes shift to you. I am Reverend Hieronymus Doloroso, head of the Drusian mission here on Footfall. I thank you for stepping in. Please, come see me when you have the time. We can talk then. Man, look at his crazy eyes. Guess we should, probably shouldn't keep him waiting too long. Argenta, are you gonna say anything? A stall selling old knickknacks for everyday needs. Small food booth. The portions look meager, of course. The wares here are shoddy looking weapons built out of questionable parts. We have goods here. Another leaflet. Lots of leaflets. More goods up here. Probably another leaflet. Alright. I'm taking it all down, because I don't need I these damn Anders to be plan. spreading their, uh... Oh wait, what is this? A dreadful Xenos. Xeno beasts... Unknownness. Behavior, cruelty, trickery, rampant mating, habitat, void, 
<laughs> Doesn't need air. Diet rocks. Fears. The Emperor and fire. <laughs> Hold on, what kind of Xenos is this? I don't think this is a Xenos. I think this is a mutant. God damn it. Punish the enemies of humanity? Hold on, what was this? Oh, these are the Xenos. These might be Eldari. Punish the Xenos. A coin for a go. Oh, God. Durukara behavior. Villainy, malice. Habitat. Everywhere. Hides among people. Diet. Doesn't eat. Feeds on blasphemous thoughts. Fears. The Emperor. Prayer. Righteous thoughts. God. What have we here? Another Xeno? I don't know what you are. You actually look like an Eldar, but very mutated. Yaldari, behavior duplicitous, aggressive, habitat, woods, diet, infants, two to three a week, fears, the emperor, and righteous people. Hmm, I sense a common theme here. <laughs> Carnival Barker. The young man is clearly making every effort to look dapper. His fashionable clothes are practically new and his hair is well-groomed. What ruins this impression is the poorly scruffed off oil stains from his leaky implant and the fit of his jacket, which was clearly made for someone else. Come one, come all! See for yourself the best collection of live Xenos on Footfall! Goodbye, the captives. What kind of collection is this? Dangerous, vicious, ruthless Xeno beasts caught red handed as they were attempting to commit evil against the Imperium! But right now, they're harmless. Our cages can withstand their rage. But I wouldn't recommend getting too close. <laughs> yeah, okay, they are all just mutants. These aren't Xenos. They're mutants in makeup. The man's smile dims, but only for a moment. Not Xenos, you say? I am sure there must be some mistake. I will be checking the shipping list myself, rest assured. His words are oozing with greenish-yellow hues. I do not think the promise will be kept. Such entertainment is lucrative precisely because billions of Imperium subjects have never encountered a Xenos in their life. Ignorance and curiosity create colossal demand. That's what I was taught, and I can see the lesson was truthful. I demand that this abuse be stopped and all the captives freed. Apologies, ma'am. Uh, that is simply impossible. Private property, legitimate business, licensed by the liege. Last but not least, it's a noble cause to help the citizens of Footfall foster a proper attitude towards the enemies of humanity. With a guilty look, he makes a helpless gesture. Fine. I will buy all of the captives from you. He thinks for a moment. Oh, Jesus, two profit factor lost. All because I wanted to be a goddamn goody two-shoes? Never being a goddamn goody two-shoes again. He thinks for a moment. That can be done. Very much so. The entire collection will cost you a tidy sum, but you're free to take them away right now. Well. Bought myself some mutants. Hopefully they can serve on board my ship. Once we get on board, we have some people to talk to. We're saving all kinds of people. Maybe we'll be, uh, you know, getting some extra goodwill from the disaffected. More goods over here. What have we? Ranged weapons, miscellaneous. Nothing, like, overly interesting. Ship components. No, ship components are not actually traded to the Imperial Navy, are they? Alright, what do we have here? Some more bullshit? We have important matters to discuss with the liege. I highly doubt it. Another leaflet? Yep. I always keep my options open. Opens up there. Ooh, we can actually tech use this. I will. Now you gonna click it. 100%. Go on, Pascal. Jewelry, uniform kit. Alright. Not great, but hey, you know, it's uh, functionally for free. We didn't have to spend anything always on it. And we can use this price. cogitator. Let's uh, logic this and Pascal in. Yeah. It opens a door. What kind of door? Goods? Oh, goods. Probably just a leaflet, I would guess. Oh, look, it's just a leaflet. 
a lot of those around here. I wish you could pack them into a cargo. We could jump over. Is there money to be made? Interesting. Athletics 100. We're looking Compared pretty good. This service, is intriguing. That was barely a challenge. With some goods here. Ooh, a great sword and a commander's monocle. Whenever an ally under the effect of the wearer's voice of command ability makes an attack during the extra turn, the attack deals an additional three times fellowship bonus damage. Ah, that's going on Cyrene. Because she does voice of command. And her fellowship is actually good, as opposed to Cassia's, which is... It's okay. What am I wearing? Ooh, that's... That's not too bad, either. We'll hold off on that. Maybe we can give that to, uh, to him. Yeah, it, it will certainly look better than his current stupid helmet. All right, and a great sword, huh? I mean, he already has a great sword, but this one's better. He has the Rotobi pattern great sword. We're gonna give him the uh, just regular great sword. It has the same uh, same effect, so I think this can go to cargo. What what kind of? It's gonna be fifteen percent of a melee cargo. Send it. All right, that was cool. Um, some some good loot. This is just gonna allow us to jump back, I imagine. Servitor there, nothing else. Oh hi! What's going on I, here? I did it. Oh, there was a dead guy in the uh, cabinet. That's what happened here. <laughs> the numerous wounds and injuries indicate that this was a particularly brutal murder. The letters A and V are carved into the victim's shoulder blade. Oh, lovely. Jump over. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Okay, so we shall uh, descend. and head up where we need to go. Gunsmith's Guild, but we can't talk to any of them. I'd like to buy some guns from the Gunsmith's Guild, but this is probably not for us. This is probably like lower ranking weapons here. I'm not seeing anybody that we can converse with. What is happening here though? I always have a backup plan. Drusian Preacher? One of the many altars. It looks better tended than most places on football. I always keep my options open. Okay. Um, anything else along the flanks here? Not really, right? Oh, God, there's so much loot that we missed. What did we miss here? Oh, goods. All the way up there, huh? How do we get up there? There must be a way. Very clearly a way. Yeah, ah, there's all cool. kinds of stuff here. Let's use this cogitator. Ah! It opens the door. Good, good. More workers. It's a very cool area, I will say. Some boots. Unyielding Vanguard boots. All allies in a two-cell radius around the wearer gain a plus 40% bonus to resolve from the Unyielding Beacon ability. Well, you're a Vanguard. Do you have boots? Yes. Ooh, that would reduce the cost of charge. Or we increase uh, resolve. But they have to be in a two cell radius around him. I don't know if they're, he's gonna have allies in a two cell radius around him, to be honest. I don't know if that's Keep something we can really you. use. Because he's mostly off on his own, tanking the entire enemy uh, formation. I don't know, we'll see how useful Vanguard is. I may do some respecking on all of the characters, because I don't really know how any of these things work, so. Uh, like pretty flowers overgrown with weeds, the halls of the Footfall's former palaces and temples have been overrun by the shabby houses of its present-day inhabitants. We'll get left in the dust. Very cool, actually. Successful. Okay. And, uh, we can Experience? move over this block. Nothing passage. matters more. I always have a backup plan. Head over this way. Some more goods here. Let me guess. Another leaflet. What a surprise. And, ah, hello. You see an acolyte right here. But we have to go all the way around for that? Hold on. Not yet. I First mate Dagon. And table with drinks. Cast Bilardo, a chaplain. Okay, there's a lot more to do here, actually. Um, on second thought, let's actually quickly go back. You are loot. I mean, they are not loot. Let's 
Let us not dawdle. But there is loot. Okay, this is a locked My one. success is an irrefutable certainty. Very good. We're still missing some here. So, this is right up here? I didn't check this. Ah, uh, this is... Now I'm just confused. Lore Empyrean. That's how it's done. The statue undoubtedly depicts Parsimus Dewayne, the legendary rogue trader who founded football. Interesting. And some more uh, pamphlets. I hope there's something we can do with all of these. More goods up here. Hieronymus. Okay, we can talk to him actually right now. Let's uh, let's do that. After we steal his stuff, of course. The man with the face so drawn it appears to be made of nothing but skin and bone fixes his unblinking, bird-like eyes on you. Priests' simple black clothes have next to no adornments, and they do nothing to mask his unhealthy gauntness. In a cracked voice, he says, The Emperor protects. I don't want to do this. It might reduce my profit factor. The Emperor protects, Reverend. But he protects only those who are pure of heart. Do you think yourself one of them? Be leery of this conviction of yours. Many who have risen to the pinnacle of faith have fallen from it into the embrace of pride most degenerate. And you must be the young Von Valencius. That name carries weight, and it is a burdensome one, for its reputation suggests that Theodora encumbered it with many a transgression. I wonder, will you seek to shed them, or will you carry them onward, picking them along the way like ripe fruit and savoring their sweet poison? You're saying Theodora was a transgressor? A woman of great gifts, but few considered virtue to be one of them. People whispered that power had corrupted her, made her believe that she was entitled to anything she wanted. It is known that she showed cordiality to Xenos, broke taboos, and violated dogmas. Then again, so do nearly all rogue traders. Rogue traders are the Emperor's anointed. I act at his command as evidenced by his signature on my warrant. And did he grant it to you personally? The Emperor was entrusted by his servants. Or, sorry. The Emperor has entrusted his servants with the future of humanity. But people are too weak and flawed to prove themselves worthy of his trust. Only suffering can cleanse us. But we fear it, and thus remain sullied. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll make the sign of the Holy Aquila. I put my faith in the Emperor. And <laughs> we make the Aquila. He makes the Aquila. He gives you a s scrutinizing look, and his tone softens. Well, then be twice as diligent, for this sector will seize any chance to test your faith. He looks at Argenta, who is standing nearby, and his voice softens slightly. Greetings, sister. I congratulate you on your return. Was your pilgrimage fruitful? It was, Reverend. Let it be known to you that Theodora von Valencius' ship was attacked by servants of the Arch Enemy, who appall the heart of any righteous soul, she says, nearly hissing you with fury. And not all of them met a fitting end. Some fled, and more than that, their blasphemous words were clearly pointed to this attack being part of a larger design. Reverend Hieronymus, I wish to join the esteemed rogue trader's crew and help protect the Von Valencius dynasty from the forces of the Arch Enemy. I am divesting myself of the responsibility of guarding the Footfall Reliquary. That would add something to that if it weren't so beneath me. Um... No, I don't know what that means. We'll say this, though. Mr. Argento stood by my side during the assault on the ship. I could use her assistance going forward. Hieronymus nods in thought. Follow the call of your soul, sister. The footfall reliquary will be preserved even without your contribution, as it was in all the years preceding your arrival. Wow. 
Way to make her feel useless. I mean, humility is a thing, I guess. Hieronymus smiles sadly. I know what it is that calls you to follow the rogue trader, Sister Argenta. You seek combat, for it helps you forget how hollow and worthless our lives truly are. It offers the illusion of meaning. Perhaps you will relinquish this illusion one day, or perhaps you will die before the day comes. Regardless, I wish you luck on your new path. But before you start on a path towards your new destiny, I have a request to make of you and your companion. Many among my flock are from the poorest, most dispossessed people on Footfall. They've brought me troubling news from Footfall's shadow quarters, in the darkest corners where the Leisure's wardens do not venture, taint has taken root. Footfall is consumed by profanity. Even here, true heresy. Serving the arch enemy is a rarity. The cultists who now dwell in the Shadow Quarters mark their abodes with the sun inscribed in blue and gold, and perform strange rituals in secret. They find weak, or the weak find solace in believing these reports to be rumors. But I well know that evil lurks all around us, and I wish to see retribution. I come across heresy surprisingly often these days. Indeed, dark times are upon us, and wretched souls grow ever more eager to embrace heresy, both on footfall and elsewhere. Its foul buds are coming into bloom. Troubling news is arriving from many planets. There are whispers of wicked things taking place on Kiava Gamma, and just recently, a transport ship by the name of Navika, teeming with refugees, arrived on footfall from Winterscale's realm. Their world was stricken with blasphemous sedition, and such was its severity that they had to flee to save themselves. The liege refused to accept them, and so they headed for Foulstone, a desolate cloister of the righteous. It was wise of them not to linger in this den of vileness. We will verify this rumor, Reverend Hieronymus. With great pleasure, Argenta puts her hand to the stock of her weapon. I almost wish for the rumor to be true. My heart yearns for battle, or to battle some heretics. This is where I bid you goodbye, sister. Noble Cyrene von Valencius. Is there more you wish to ask me about? What are you doing on footfall? What am I doing in this den of blasphemers, pagans, and the vilest of souls, you mean to say? Well, footfall is the first and last stop in the Corvus Expanse. It is the point for arrival for those who have just started on their path, and it is also where those who are reaching its very end return, their souls wounded and bleeding. I embrace both the former and the latter, so that they may cast an honest eye over their impurity. Furthermore, rumors from across the entire sector amass in footfall. If I hear crewmen whispering about a reclaimed shrine world who are expressing desire to carry the Emperor's light into the darkness among the stars, I help my flock in their sacred duty. Devoted trailblazers need assistance, both spiritual and material. Tools, equipment, even garments and simple, everyday items. Anything that might help pilgrims on their long journey, and during the first days of the harsh frontier life, is worth its weight in gold to us. May any help you offer to the effort of gathering such things be blessed. The path of true believers leads into darkness. To search for worlds that have lost his radiance, steeped in depravity. Blessed are the deeds of those who give themselves into the void and the warp in hopes that the actions might bring light into the darker reaches of the expanse and deliver a previously barren world into the Imperium's service. Hieronymus is silent for a few seconds. And all the more bitter is the realization that not all brave souls will succeed in their mission. Footfall still awaits news from the wasteland Wayfarer, an ancient ark of a ship headed for distant stars. Her last astropathic message was sent from beyond the Cineris Maleficum, and the stars have kept her fate secret since. Another thing for us to look into, a new rumor indeed. I bear another darker duty. The expanse is filled 
with the tainted creations of unholy heretics. These insidious objects are a danger to the soul, but I know what to do with them. Should you, on your travels, come upon dangerous, corrupted objects, bring them to me, and the reward for your vigilance will be even more generous. The Drusian mission has much to share with the rogue trader. Tell me about yourself. Neither my past nor my present hold any secrets, but take heed when gazing into my heart, for many dark thoughts lurk within. What is troubling your heart? Bad omens. Dark times have come. Ships from the Imperium barely appear in the coronous expanse anymore. In footfalls shadow quarters, taint thrives, and people here are corrupt enough to succumb to it gladly. Rumors around the expanse say that the accursed Xenos have grown bold and are rearing their heads. They attack ships and settlements, walk under the suns of Imperium worlds like kings instead of cowering in the shadows. What next? What adversities await us if such disgrace is happening already? He shakes his head sternly. There's more and more talk of how poorly things are going in the Expanse. Some days it seems I can't take two steps without hearing some peasant pontificating on the matter. <laughs> even, it is, even if it is as dire as they say, the Von Valencius realm will not crumble under the blows of fate, no matter how devastating. Cheer up, Lord Captain. There's no time to lose heart and lament your lot. No, not only is your hope false, it is also dangerous among his servants. There have been people of greater integrity who sullied themselves in their attempts to rise above the rest. Well, as you say, but who were you in the past? A wretched fiend, blinded by my ambitions. I served in my planet's Adeptus Administratum division. I was a shrewd and sly bureaucrat, and I soared to great heights, to the very chair of Prefect. In thirty years I turned my home from a withered fringe colony into a prosperous world. Our wealth grew as we bloomed. But the bloom was a veneer for rot. Opulence had depraved us, and luxury had seduced us with its sordid promises. The planet's denizens no longer wished to pray or work. They only sought entertainment and dangerous philosophies. A thousand vile heresies and a million appalling voices. Their vices bred on my world like mold on a Nutri-Bar. In those days, I saw with my own eyes the shameless ugliness of the soul. I repented of my hubris, left the position of prefect, and became a traveling missionary. I have been one ever since. As for my world, twenty years later, the Holy Inquisition consigned it to purifying flames. The Emperor is merciful for allowing you a chance at redemption. Who said I had redeemed myself? I doomed an entire planet to degeneracy. You think a decade or two of wandering with a mission is enough to atone for that? No. I am a poor excuse for a shepherd in his eyes. Your words about the past are drowned in murky hues of sickly green, and your talk of the present falls in gray flakes of ash upon the shoulders of your listeners. Sorrow truly weighs heavily upon you, Reverend Hieronymus, and that is why the fire in your words is devoid of golden radiance. The faded flickers of teachings leave nothing but black soot on their souls. I'd like to take a look at what the followers of St. Drusus have to offer me. Let me see. Well, we can get more medkits. An enforcer helmet. All targets of taunting scream suffer two times strength plus toughness bonus penalty to the willpower test. Okay, that's going to be really good on Abelard. Onslaught. Oh boy. Instantly increases movement points by 6 and grants 2 charges of the slash ability, but yet reduces weapon skill, ballistic skill, and perception by 15 until the user's next turn. Interesting. The Bloodhound Staff. Oh, it's a Navigator Staff. Devastating 6. Come on, let me just click the... Okay, whatever. We have it now. Um, info. 
first use of an attacking navigator power per turn does not set the power on cooldown and does not count towards the attack limit per turn. The second use of this power, or the use of a different attacking navigator power on the same turn, deals an additional plus six damage to all targets and six direct damage to the navigator. Holy shit! That's awesome! <laughs> okay. We're a bit low on profit factor. Because I bought some Dinos, in quotes. But you have some cool stuff. An Imperial Scroll. Okay, just grants 15 to lore Imperium. An Elite Chainsword. That sounds like something for, uh... Maybe for, uh... Oh god, why am I... Appelard. Instead of the Greatsword? I don't know. Militant's Cloak. Well, let's see just the cool types of weapons here. We have a Sanctified Staff, so this is going to grant the Emperor's Wrath. Seems like a uh, an AoE ability. A power claymore? Oh, hell yeah. Another heavy bolter. Dark Visionary Hood. Oh, that looks cool. I want that. Reconstructed Flamer Pistol. That's pretty good. Lots of cool things. Heavy Flamer. Focused Meltagun. A Thunder Hammer. <laughs> Condensed Carapace Armor. It's light armor, apparently. Pretty good, actually. 42% armor without... Yeah, that, that's that's quite quite good. Uh, we have no reputation with him. But at this point, we don't really have much reason to sell him anything. Although, yeah, we don't actually... It's just hide untradeable. He wants holy gifts, he wants jewelry, and ship components. Why do you want jewelry? I mean, he'll give a lot for it. I guess we can trade some stuff to him. The ship components, for sure. Holy gifts? Yeah, we'll give you holy gifts. I'm just going to give these to him and see if it does anything to my profit factor. I think it doesn't. But on the off chance it does. We have a lot of holy gifts. We'll trade here. Alright, so we've gotten some reputation there. Oh, we still don't even have rank 1. Ah, this is going to go very slowly. These are indeed some of the items that we can get. I wonder if we actually get enough to trade with everyone. I, I reckon we probably don't, and we're going to have to make some choices at some point. But, there's a couple of things I would want. Like this heavy bolter for uh, Argenta, I think, would be pretty cool. And the dark visionary hood for myself. Actually, I don't even know. Plus 10 to willpower, and plus 15 damage to psychic and navigator powers. Okay, potentially good on Cassia. Or, uh, Idira as well. Cool stuff. Alright, that was fun. Now my throat hurts. For some reason, doing his voice is absolute murder on my throat. Uh, I can do the some of the harsher Tech Priest voices and everything. Like, I used to sing for a black metal band. Um, so, like, the super harsh voices is fine, but this sort of tremulous and constantly fluctuating in pitch thing that I was trying to do with, uh, <laughs> with Hieronymus' murder on my uh, vocal cords. But you know what? It was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, anyways, Justified let's look here. Plant. In this mishmash of devices and cables, you notice equipment from totally different eras. Some ancient, some merely old. The others hastily tossed together in more recent years. All right. Yeah, we already looked at that. What is this? I'm sure, it's something. The sight of this cogitator would be enough to break any tech priest's heart. The machine is leaning slightly to one side, grimy, covered in scrawled drawings, with frivolous writing scratched here and there on the casing. Several keys are missing, and the rest is coated with dust. This is a tragedy. Pascal's respirator lets out a mournful hiss before he says grimly, The right of operation has been repeatedly and blasphemously violated, requesting identification and punishment of the deplorable acolyte entrusted with caring for the spirit of this machine. Let's tech use this, try and repair it. After a series of creaks and groans, the cogitator's dusty screen lights up. On it are several lines of text, sections, or section headings. Praise the Omnissiah. The machine spirit of this cogitator is aggrieved, but willing to serve. Accompanied by the crackling of a binaric prayer, Pascal's mechadendrites gently place a couple of keys lying on the floor back into place. Select the section titled, Welcome. 
In the name of the founder of Football Station, conqueror of the stars, builder of outposts, the noblest of rogue trader, or the noblest rogue trader, Parsimus de Wayne, and on behalf of all his descendants, I welcome you. This cogitator was installed on the order of the illustrious Parsimus so that the needy may tap into the flow of his wisdom. Cast your eyes upon the list of sections and choose what you wish to know. Parsimus de Wayne? I've never heard of such a rogue trader house. Really? Abelard hasn't heard of him. Interesting. Whoever this Parsimus was, he sure thought big. Lord Captain Parsimus de Wayne, one of the trailblazers of the Coronus Expanse, and this station's founder. I've read about his great deeds. Lord de Wayne was once a colonel in the Astra Militarum, but by his will later inherited a warrant. He accumulated enough power to gather a small fleet of loyal allies and venture out to conquer the Coronus Expanse. They say Footfall was meant to be his personal palace world, but the construction dragged on for decades, and Lord Parsimus eventually died of old age. His enemies instantly tore Footfall to pieces and turned it into the bastion of hum humanity we know today, one that is full of bandits, privateers, hustlers, and rogue traders. Pleased with herself, Cassia nods slightly to let everyone know that the lecture is over. <laughs> uh, that's adorable. The music in the background, I don't know if you guys can hear this. It's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's like a gothic 40k version, less energetic as well, of the Black Sails theme song, which is, you know, amazing. But it's, it's definitely got that vibe. It's like the section entitled, titled, About Football. Footfall Station has been envisioned by the great Parsimus de Wayne as a palace in the stars, as majestic as the spirit and mind of its creator. As of the, the year of this cogitator's installation, merely a small fraction of the great Parsimus's designs have yet been made a reality, but already their audacity and grandeur are staggering. Footfall is to become a gateway to the savage and barely explored Coronus Expanse, a foothold for future conquests by the Imperium and the noble Parsimus de Wayne, who acts by the Emperor's will. The cogitator wheezes and blinks, clearly trying to shut down. I'm going to attempt an emergency repair. The cogitator whirs, and the screen turns back on. One of the first structures on Footfall was the colossal statue of the Emperor. A whole asteroid was used for the creation of the sculpture. But even its titanic proportions cannot convey the awe that every faithful servant of the Imperium feels before the Master. The statue is the center of footfall in the same way that the Emperor is the center and heart of the Imperium. As construction progresses, new, smaller asteroids are being attached to the statue, the surface serving as foundations for glorious palaces and temples, and their inner tunnels as home for commoners and rabble. Select a section titled Parsimus de Wayne's Design. The cogitator flickers and grunts before displaying a tapestry of text. The great Parsimus de Wayne intends to conquer the Coronus Expanse and build the most grandiose structure, which will shine through the ages, praising the names of its creator and his descendants. Footfall, the palace and the stars, the glory of the great Parsimus's deeds will live on through the ages and his grand designs. Clearly, if Abelard and Idira, who are like as immersed in the rogue trader business as you can be, especially Abelard, doesn't know who he is, that obviously went very wrong. Cogitator hisses and grunts as it tries to clean its insides by spewing out dust and detritus through the cracks. Cogitator hisses for a while, then the screen flickers and once more shows the words, The Great Parsimus de Wayne intends to conquer... Okay, it's glitching here. Pascal's Vox wheezes mournfully, The spirit of this machine is enraged and will perform its functions no more. I will see to it that the profaners responsible for its maintenance are marked for servo penance. Yeah, I don't think anyone's been maintaining this one. Poor little computer. Cogitator. Sorry. Is there money to be made? Hieronymus de la Rosa, and there's a chaplain here with... Oh yeah, there were a couple of people over that way. That's to the rest of Footfall. That's to the Legion's Palace. We're not going to do all of this today. We're going to go and have a look at this area down here and talk to this chaplain. Maybe we can buy some things. I think we can. I think that's what that symbol means. The question is, how did we get there? We had to, like... Find our way. Yeah, here we go. A little bit out of the way. Thankfully, you move really fast in this game, so... Makes the whole... Oh! Maybe we'll even get a fight. That'd be nice. I'm itching for some violence. The low hum of voices quiets, and a dozen gazes shifts to you. First mate Dagon. 
The tall man with the shaved head is rubbing his hands together nervously. His opulent clothes are nearly bursting at the seams on his muscular body. And his expression is forbiddingly grim. Still, he's trying to put on an air of friendliness. Greetings. You must be... He glances at the scroll in his mechanical hand implant. Mistress Fidelio, all the guests have arrived. You're the last on the list. And we couldn't well start without you. Your presence is absolutely vital. Of course, I'm Fidelio. He puts on a broad smile, then catches himself and quickly frowns once more. Please, <clears throat> we can talk later. Chaplain is about to begin. What is this tomfoolery? Abelard grumbles. But not before making sure that the man is out of earshot. I'm gonna look around. The gathering you've found yourself at seems refined and respectable at first glance. The decorations and the attendees' clothes speak of wealth, and so does the location, which isn't far from the Liege's residence. But you notice that most of the ga of those gathered are rather imposing of physique. Many of them have scars and military-grade implants. Several of the guests look like they are covering the exit. A few are clearly carrying concealed weapons. Hmm. Your appearance has definitely attracted everyone's attention. Just about every guest here keeps glancing at you, and some are clearly watching your every move, even though they are trying not to show it. I want to see what this is about. Abelard's not gonna like that. But it's fine. Ooh, there's a... corpse in a coffin. Or, or maybe they're just sleeping. And it's just a coffin-shaped bed. Oh, what a terrible, sorrowful day. We pay our respects to the life and soul of football society, a loyal servant of the Imperium, a generous benefactor who spared no expense to keep the fire of faith burning, and an example to all future generations, the most noble and unforgettable Master Bellardo. This loss... The fussy administratum clerk speaks in a strained voice and keeps peeking at the paper with text on it. His speech drags on and on, blending into a monotonous cascade of praises of the late Master Bellardo. So, let us offer a prayer to the Emperor for this, for the repose of Master Bellardo's soul and the prosperity of his heirs. I now pass you over to our most reverend chaplain. A formidable-looking man in the attire of an ecclesiarchy missionary glares at the gathered crowd. And here you all are, you vultures. Let's offer a prayer, then. But if you think that the Emperor, or the messenger of his will, in other words, myself, does not see into your vile souls, you are sorely mistaken. Ah, uh, just usual funeral stuff. Kaplan looks at you and gives a slight nod. I wasn't referring to Master Fidelio. At least, Denz himself wanted to see her at this funeral. But the rest, I know every one of you, and I would be astonished to discover anyone who truly mourns this loss. So, go ahead. Pray for Bellardo's soul. Soon the flames will take him. A fitting end for a life like his. May the Emperor keep his soul. Without another word, Chaplin makes the sign of the Aquila and pointedly turns away from the attendees. Hmm. All right, then. Well, uh, that was interesting. Ceremony guest, you look... strange. Um, whoever prepared the body of the gray-haired man lying in the coffin, they did a good job. Even in death, he looks majestic. Abelard maintains a grave expression befitting the occasion, until he sees the face of the deceased. He frowns, he peers at it with suspicion, then he gasps, astonished, almost dazed. I'll be. This is quite the meeting, if it can be called such under the circumstances. Yeah, take a look at it as well. The implants left in the deceased's body speak of his high standing. Expensive tech is typically extracted from the dead, and only the most prominent and wealthy avoid this fate upon their death. Abelard, you know this man. Do I? I would tell you all about this man, but the words I'd use would be improper for a funeral. This, your ladyship is Jerry Candens, known back in the day as one of the most notorious pirates in the Coronus Expanse. All right, pirate funeral. <laughs> of course, that explains everything. 
They nicknamed him Jerry Can for his habit of having a jug or two of Prometheum on hand. He did love burning things. Oh yes, he was a menace back then. How long ago was it? Sixty years ago? I was serving my last days in the Navy when news came of his latest attack. Avalar distractedly runs a hand through his hair. Well, well. There was a time when the sight of Jerry Can in a coffin would have been enough to make me dance, quite literally. By the throne I would have danced a jig on the spot. But now I don't know. No more jumping into the warp right from under a cruiser's nose, eh, you old beast? Who would have thought I'd be at your funeral? Interesting. He almost seems to respect him now. I think him turning away from the... You know... Hardline life of the Imperial Navy and going a bit more into the... Morally gray... Questionable life in the Rogue Trader services made him see things in a different perspective. <laughs> I like it. This was very grand for a pirate's funeral. Is this normal for footfall? Folks on footfall are known to turn a blind eye to many things. But even the locals aren't so unscrupulous as to honor pirate scum a few paces away from the Legion's residence. But no one has heard of Dens for so many decades. I barely recognized him myself. And I've seen his face on Picts a few times back then. I assumed he retired and started a more or less honest life under a new name. What was it they were calling him? Master Bilardo? Now I remember. Reverend Hieronymus mentioned the name Master Bilardo as one of the biggest donors to the temple. Oh. Well, that's interesting. That could mean all kinds of things. Step <laughs> away from the coffin. Okay. Table with drinks. As it should be. There's an odd smell to this Amasek. It seems very likely that the drink has been poisoned. Oh, cool. Uh, first mate Dagon, let's talk to him. The tall man who welcomed you at the entrance is shifting from foot to foot and keeps glancing around with a gloomy expression. He nods to you sympathetically. Mistress Fidelio. How did Bilardo die? Badly. He went downhill real fast. Just a year ago, he was still living it up. Storming the slum asteroids to shoot riffraff and mutants. And then all of a sudden he was done. His old wounds had caught up with him. And he had plenty of those, both from the old days and more recent ones. Like when somebody tried to bump him off. Twelve years back, I think it was. You never introduced yourself. I'm Dagon Othio. I was first mate on Denza's ship. I mean, Master Bilardo. Given the deceased's former occupation, I have a good idea what role you played under his command. Dagon smirks. They used to call me Torch. He's Jerry Can. I'm Torch. Those were the days. I must take my leave. Rise ceremony to the top. Here. There was or somebody else that we could talk to in this area. There's at least some loot. There's the clerk. Maybe we can say something to the clerk. Mr. Sfidelio, my regards. We'll talk to the chaplain. Although his name is just chaplain. He's not the chaplain. Among the words of parting and praise from the deceased, a fresh entry stands out, Repentance, with the signature underneath, Fid. The letters are crabbed and barely re barely legible. I always right. have a backup plan. We have Cass Bilardo here. Hmm. A man of indeterminate age turns to you and sighs loudly. You can tell by his breath that he came out of the ceremony after indulging in one or two glasses of strong drink. He might die. You may have been poisoned. Ah, Mistress Fidelio. I've heard so much about you, and... Here you are at last, in the flesh. We haven't been introduced. Pardon me, Cass Bilardo. I have the honor of being the only child of the deceased. He sends a mocking salute in the direction of the coffin. You don't seem particularly grief-stricken over your father's death. If I was the one lying in the box, he wouldn't be crying his eyes out either. Cass bites out with sudden acidity. He takes a moment to calm himself. A son's feelings are complicated. I wasn't a good son, old Denz wasn't a good father, but I do miss him in my own way, yes. He always seemed timeless to me, not just a bag of meat and ugly ambitions like the rest of us are. Did your father ever talk to you about repentance? <laughs> That's hilarious. Even good old Chaplin doesn't tell me to repent. He gave up on me long ago. And my old dad, he gave up on me long before that. <laughs> Wait, you mean that, that repentance? Those stupid ghosts or whatever it was? I'm pretty sure my father did it himself, the senile old kook. Maybe it was my daughter messing around. Where else would those words have come from? What words are you talking about? Oh, you don't know? 
Out of the blue, writing started appearing on the wall in our house. Just one word. Repentance. Big, sprawling scribbles like a child's handwriting. The first one appeared about ten or so years back. The help kept whispering about it. It being the work of ghosts. Ugh. But for some reason, the old man didn't want to do anything about it, and he told me not to. The writing amused him somehow. Whenever he'd see repentance scratched on the wall, he'd just grin. Idira turns to you and shakes her head. It'd be good to take a look at that writing. But if I had to guess, it doesn't sound like warp influence to me. It sounds like something really did take up residence in that house, and it would have been and it would have made a bigger splash in ten years, like a dozen corpses big. Oh, if something really did take up residence. Okay, sorry, I read that wrong. It would have made a bigger splash, yeah. What did Bellardo die of? Age, debauchery, old wounds. By the end, my old dad was more implant than man. Especially after the assassination attempt. People tried to kill him, you see, about 12 years ago. And what is it that you've heard about me? That you were very close to us. Uh, forget it. I didn't mean anything by it. Just making conversation. I see. Thank you for speaking with me. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Nothing escapes my sight. Oh, hello. That is a uh, that is a trap. We'll send our gentry to go and deal with it. I better myself through What have my we service. here? The self-firing trap wasn't placed here by accident. No, oh, and we got something there too. Some other things. Hull plating. Yeah, yeah, ship components. Like that. There was one more uh, bit of loot all the way up in this corner. Oh, I haven't even been here. Oh, no, no, hold on. Um, I did not actually want to leave. I wanted to go somewhere else. But anyways, Mistress Fidelia, are you leaving already? I'm afraid you'll have to wait. <laughs> wait, yes. It's Footfall Station Services, see? They're carrying out a scheduled inspection of the life support systems. It won't take long, an hour, maybe two. Did Bilardo ever mention repentance to you? No. But I know what you're talking about. The scribbles in his home, right? Yeah, it happened all right. That writing just appeared out of nowhere. On the walls, mirrors, and always the same word. Repentance. I told him to go get a psyker to check his house for sorcery, but he said no. Too pricey. I guess he said something about that. And now he had already paid too much for repentance. Not a lot of psychers around. A single one of them will cost you as much as a team of top-notch bruisers. Hey, listen, friend. How long did that go on? The writing. Anything else happen in the household? Flying knickknacks, furniture growing tentacles, people dying for no reason. <laughs> furniture growing tentacles. Oh, all kinds of things happened, my girl. Things going flying, people dying too. Servants, that is. Whenever we felt like remembering our glory days and got sloshed on half a jug of the good stuff, that's when it would happen. I remember one time we decided to see who would carve open, who could carve open servitors in the dark the quickest. Dagon grins, then catches himself and glances at you. All right, serious talk. Nah, nothing like that in the house. Nothing sorcerous apart from the writing. As for when it began, Xenos knows. 10, 12 years ago, right after the assassination attempt. I must take my leave. Let yeah, there was, there was, the loot was here. Do you and see that? right there. What have we here? Just some stuff. Great. And some more stuff over here. Oops. Well, I hope that wasn't a trap that we could have gotten. It looks like a deliberately set trap meant to collapse part of the building. I hmm. always keep my options open. Concerning, let's talk to Chaplin. Up close, Chaplin leaves an even stronger impression. A tall, burly man whose face and hands bear numerous scars. His entire visage seems to tell of the many st of the story of many heretics who met their end upon their encounter with this adept of the true faith. Chaplin gives you a friendly nod, but his gaze is intense, like he's trying to get a sense of who you are. Pleasure to meet you, Mistress Fidelio. I prefer to go by Chaplin, both my name and my occupation. You know, it's funny, despite being Denz's, that is to say, Master Pilardo's closest associate and confessor, I've never heard of you, the woman he chose to be his sole heir. I'm glad, of course, 
But the inheritance didn't go to any of the others, the vultures. But I'm still curious. Why you? We were especially close. Unsurprising. Dens did like remarkable people, and he knew how to get people to like him. Given your speech during the ceremony, I take it you're not fond of the other attendees. I'm a missionary of St. Drusus, and the truth of the Imperium speaks through me, so I see no point in pretense. All who have gathered here have one goal, to bite a chunk out of the Dens' estate. Ambition and aspirations of wealth are not immoral and, or in and of themselves, but... It's just that I'm sickened by the thought that such a great man has left behind nothing but a pile of human refuse. His son is a drunk and a weakling. His friend Dagon, the one who greeted you at the entrance, is a dim-witted brute with an incredibly bloated ego. His widow made off with the family yacht in the direction of the maw while his body was still warm. With an entourage of five brawny, good-looking fellows. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to believe that he didn't choose you as his heir on a whim, Mistress Fidelio. At least, you had the guts to come here, into the nest of vipers who despise you because Denz's money and property slipped through their fingers. I respect that kind of audacity, and so did he. A question, if I may. How was it that an ecclesiarchy missionary came to be a friend and associate of a famous pirate? The captain chuckled, or chaplain chuckles. The scars on his face grow even more prominent. Do you know why they call me chaplain? It's because I was a priest on Denz's ship in his wilder days. Yeah, I figured. If you're surprised, you shouldn't be. There are plenty of heretic scum among the pirates of the Expanse, but Denz wasn't one of them. He was a true believer, when he shared more of the Imperium's ideals than some of those stiff-necked officers. A leader with an iron fist and an iron will. We don't owe our conquest of thousands of star systems to people like that. Or don't we owe our conquest of thousands of star systems to people like that, he asks. And the ones he robbed were mostly types of that no true subject of the Imperium would shed a tear over. Xenos, heretics, not all of them, of course. But the Emperor will judge if Dens was a decent man. <laughs> On well, the matter of inheritance, when can I claim it? Oh, uh, actually. I have a strong suspicion that someone here wants me dead. You don't say. How can this be? Someone wants the sole heir of a tremendous fortune dead in the place where the other contenders deprived of these riches have gathered. If you, Mistress Fidelio, really are worthy of Denza's name, you will deal with these minor vicissitudes. Consider this my blessing. The Emperor protects anyone who deserves it, that is. <laughs> I like Chaplin. <laughs> On the matter of inheritance, when can I claim it? You just can't wait, can you? Chaplin scoffs. After the funeral, Denz will be delivered into the flames, then we will announce the last of his will and testament, and you will officially come into your inheritance. Thank you for speaking with me. I must go. I wonder who's trying to kill me. Could be Dagon. Could be his son. Probably his son. Is there money son. to be made? Oh. I think we're about to find out. It's gonna be a long episode. You hear someone delicately clearing their throat. The source of this sound turns out to be the administratum clerk you saw next to the chaplain. His clothes are neat and impeccably pressed. His face, however, reveals extreme nervousness bordering on fear. My good mistress, or Fidelio, I do hope you're satisfied with the services provided by our establishment. He leans in a little closer and whispers, I beg of you, help me. Please keep your voice down. We can't let anyone hear us. It's a matter of life and death. What's the matter? Clerk wipes sweat from his brow nervously. Please understand, it's very difficult to get by on football with my wages. An Imperial Regulation 438L on post-mortal service workers on peripheral worlds directly prohibits the chief operator of the crematorium from leaving their workplace for any reason other than sleep, food, severe illness, and administration of sacraments. Therefore, I am forced, practically forced, to look for other sources of income that allow me to stay within the walls of this here establishment. I've set up a little, shall we say, enterprise and replace the implants of the deceased with identical replicas and sell them to the right people I, when I have a shipment ready. I had just prepared the newest batch of superb, unique implants of the highest quality, but I got careless. I used my first sick leave in four standard years, and it was on that very day that Master Bellardo passed away, and his family was quick to organize a ceremony in our crematorium. I simply didn't have enough time to prepare, and now my container's full of goods. It's in the furnace. 
And if you don't help me, they're going to burn it any minute. He had them in the furnace. Yeah, that makes sense. What do you need from me, and what are you offering in return? Oh. Hmm. I will help you on the following condition. You see, I am most definitely Mistress Fidelio. I'm afraid I've misplaced some of my documents. If you make me a copy of everything you can find in the archives that has my name on it, you'll get your contraband. Oh, this is like completely steal Fidelio's identity. I don't know if I want to do that. Because I don't know who Fidelio is. I think we're going to be able to inherit without this. Nope. What do you need from me, and what are you offering in return? Well, I there's still time. Could you please go? Uh, could you please get to the furnace and pull the container with the implants out of there? We'll split the goods 50-50. You can even have the first pick. Just please hurry. They'll soon be putting the coffin with old Bellardo where it belongs, and then poof, it'll be reduced to ash and my priceless augmentics along with it. Yeah. I, I have some suspicions here. Why did you decide to ask me specifically for help? No one else to turn to, the clerk claims and exclaims in dismay. All the guests here are scoundrels, murderers, or crooks, or all three at once. I was going to send in a servitor, but only personal servitors of House Bellardo are allowed into the courtyard today, and I don't have their access codes. You're all I have left. And I can tell you're an upstanding individual, with the most noble countenance too. The moment I saw you, I knew she is the one that will save me. Well, maybe I will do this. Maybe we do need this. Of course, of course, we'll do. You'll be most pleased with the results. Just help me, for throne's sake. Run preserve you. Make it look like you're just having a look around. It'll be a lot easier for you to wander into a restricted area without arousing suspicion than it is for me. Find the container. It's in the far corner. Get out and come back to me. I'll be waiting. I always have a backup plan. Crap wasn't here by accident. The clerk sent us here. I have a suspicion the clerk's gonna try and get us killed. Let's head into the crematorium and find out. Okay, what have we here? We can get inside, or let's have a look. The heavy plasteel doors to the furnace. Space reserved for coffins. I have a bad Always feeling about keep this. Your eye on the prize. I'm actually gonna save. I have a feeling we might get incinerated. Um, I'll go in myself. Fate and fortune favor the bold. Oh, everyone goes in? Okay. Let us not dawdle. Heck you. Success is the only outcome I accept. It looks like they repurposed the nozzle of an ancient station engine for the needs of cremation. All right, well, we'll get this. The lid of the container automatically opens when touched. It's completely empty. What a shocker. We're going to be incinerated. Has failed me. To the top or get left in the dust. So, Just a minor Damn it, open fire! Shoot, shoot! The walls, the floor, the doors fortify. Okay, um, I think we're gonna get burned again. But I can't interact with this, this for some reason. I always I can't keep get my out. options Stop open. Okay. Come on, Adira, look harder at the floor. We've got to Okay, we've me. got to shoot quickly. Um, I'm restless. I've suffered worse. So we can shoot the floor. I'll do it. No, my ears are ringing. I'm still standing. Just oh, barely. I, grenade. I feel cold. <laughs> yeah. Let's proceed. The battle formation is broken. Okay, we took some damage. Did we just all die? We're all on fire. That's for sure. They're on fire! On fire! Put them out! Put them out quick! The voices come to you through streams of something quick or thick and foul. Your eyes are covered with whatever your unbidden savior saw to splash over your head. At last, you can make out a silhouette of, the, of a vagrant dressed in rags leaning over you. He throws up his hand. Your ladyship! Are you all right? Did you hit anything? Any bad burns? You fell right through 
that their ceiling, and that, and it's mighty high up. <laughs> um, who are you, and what are you doing down here? We live here, is all, your ladyship, your ladiness. You see, these are the old tunnels. They dug them back in Parsimus Duane's times, right through the asteroid. It's a little shifty, there's a little stuffy down here, but it's warmer than up on the big palaces on the surface. And it's sure warm under the crematorium's furnace. They barely burn anyone up there, but they do fire it up often enough. And that's good for us. Sure, sometimes an odd smell makes its way through the vents, like they're making roast makes your mouth water. But what can you do? That's the cost of comfort for you. I don't think he's going to know who Fidelio is. How can I get out of here? Well, there's no climbing back to the crematorium for you. Look for yourself. It's all burnt and collapsed. But it's no biggie. There's only one way up there. So you won't get lost. First, you'll need to pull this big old lever to open the doors. It's rusted. It's by a busted pipe. That's where the lever is. After that, you just walk through the corridors, the shaft, the old warehouse. And there you are, on the surface. The fact that the incompetence of the crematorium's maintenance staff saved our lives does not make their negligence any less egregious. I will register a complaint. Do you happen to know who Fidelio is? I mean, wasn't there that Fid lad used to live under the fifth void? And his hussy kept yelling all like, My Fido, Fidelio, Fid... Same deal, right? Okay, uh, he doesn't know. But, you know, they helped save us. I'll give them some alms. I'm feeling kind today, here, for your help with the fire. The vagrant's faces brighten and they accept your hand out with a bow. Oh, thank you. Thank you kindly. Something to buy a bit of food with. Because, well, we used our soup to put you out, you see. And it was only two days old. I must take my leave. All the best on your journey and all. May the Emperor help you and guard you out. Wow, nice people. These vagabonds. Um, so we are, um... We've been burninated. It's painful. A whole lot of pain. And, uh, yeah, we've been betrayed by the clerk, as expected. I am, uh, I'm greatly surprised, as you can probably tell. Administration uh, we'll is a holy task. Do some, uh, okay, so that didn't work. What about, what about you? Can we, uh, or, or the to pain us? will subside. I owe you one. No, it doesn't work. It's head trauma. Can all oh okay, whoops, I just used up a med kit for no reason. Oh well. Um yeah. That's the uh of That's gonna be us. all for today. That was a exciting I mean, not very combat filled episode, but fun nevertheless. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, do drop this video a like, and uh, I will catch you all in the next one, which uh, should be up relatively soon. So uh yeah. Ash her out.